Hello. <clears throat> What's up, guys? Joe. As you know. <laughs> you guys are going to be stuck with it for a while. Shit. <laughs> Stupid thumbnail pic. I drank a lot of caffeine when I was in Vegas, so I'm just drinking water for a good while. Gotta cleanse myself. <laughs> Get rid of the guilt and shame that's still stuck in me. Anyways. <clears throat> Alright, check it out. I got a haircut. <laughs> actually, for a while, I was trying. To, I was thinking about growing my hair out. Like, somebody pointed out I was growing dreads. Yeah, actually, uh, I used to have dreads uh, when I was younger, right? And I was thinking about it. I was on the fence about it, to be honest. But, like, it got to a point where it was like, either I have to commit or I can't, right? And, like, it just... It got to be too much, right? At the moment, how things are going, it just... Going through that phase where before your head actually dreads, that's gonna take a long time. I just couldn't go through that, right? Also, like, you know, I want to make sure I did it right. So I want to get make sure I get the right shampoos and all that crap. You know, spend the time with it. It's definitely a lifestyle. It's not easy. You know, you can let it grow and not give a fuck, but... I didn't want to do that because I did that when I was younger, you know, the punker thing. I actually wanted to take care of him, right? But yeah, they actually a lot of maintenance, right? More than you think. So I couldn't do that. So I just decided, all right, just cut my hair. Be a nice, clean cut guy for you guys. <laughs> now, fuck that. I actually did for me because, yeah, I'm just too lazy to like, yeah, all the shit. Anyways, <laughs> looking good. Anyways, uh, I got a tutorial here for you guys. As you expect, going to CES, I took my computer, right? The one that paused it up for me, right? Since I was doing my vlogging, I had two softwares. I had the Premiere Pro. I used that mainly to like work on pause projects, right? Also, I was doing my vlogging and I was doing that on DaVinci. So I was using DaVinci to like edit my vlogs, right? Now, one software that helped me save a lot of time to get a lot of work done is Time Bolt, right? I've mentioned it before in my past videos. Uh, Time Bolt is one of my uh, it's one of my main softwares that I use in my toolbox, right? Now the thing with Time Bolt is that uh, when you use Time Bolt inside of Premiere Pro and you use it in DaVinci Resolve, the process is a bit different, right? Uh, the way how it imports footage and how it works with the footage, right? So uh, but at first I didn't understand that because I was coming from a Premiere Pro perspective. And uh, there are tutorials on how to use it in, in DaVinci, but uh, there's I think there's some information that uh, it's kind of left out that kind of like left me confused, right? So I want to talk to you about that. So all right, so for this tutorial, I'm going to use two video files, right? So I was actually recording a video inside of my car when uh, I got a phone call from my girlfriend and I had to stop the recording, right? And then I had to restart. So I needed, so I'm using two separate uh, video files for the same project, right? So uh, there's a reason for this, and I'll show you as we progress in this video. We got part one and part two, right? One thing I'm going to show you is basically how Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve work with XML files because um, cause when Time Board, it basically uh, cuts out the the silence of your footage, it creates an XML file. An XML file almost works like a blueprint telling like uh, your software, all right, here are the where the cuts belong and here are where the edits should be and so on and so forth, right? So that's kind of like what the next ML file is, right? I'm going to show you how Premiere Pro and DaVinci Resolve work with it. Yeah, so since I started working with Premiere Pro, uh, when I switched over to DaVinci Resolve, I was having issues because I didn't understand that the process is different, right? Or the way, the way how DaVinci reads XML files is completely different than Premiere Pro. Now, if we drop like uh, part one or footage here, it's gonna create our edits, so on and so forth. Basically, everything is red is getting cut out. But if you notice that, like, there's still a lot of gaps that are being left behind. You are able to like make adjustments in the filter sound level. Let's try negative 30, update silence, and as you see here, there's more uh, cuts being done between the gaps. So yeah, that's good enough, right? So yeah, you can mess with this if you're noticing like uh, too much is being cut out or too little is being cut out, right? I'm gonna create my XML file. You'll see me create an XML file for part one, right? All right, now I'm gonna, since I have a time board here, so ready to go, I'm gonna do uh, an XML file for part two. So I'm gonna file new, and I'm gonna drop in part two footage in my time bolt. Uh, just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm gonna leave it as is, and uh, I can export the XML file. All right, so there you go. So now we got an XML file for part one, and you got an XML file for part two, right? All right, good stuff. Now, I'm gonna start with uh, Premiere Pro. Okay, right, so with Premiere Pro, basically the way how an XML file is imported, you are able, it's a lot easier, I'll admit, right? One of those things about comparing Premiere Pro with DaVinci, uh, working with an XML file is a bit easier. Okay, I'm able to click and drag the XML file into my uh, empty project file here in Premiere Pro. And what it does is that it's able to import any footage that's associated to this XML file, right? So in this case, if I drop in the XML file, it's going to automatically bring in the footage that's associated to this XML file, which is part one here, this video clip, right? So if I click and drag, you see that? It brought in my footage, and it also created my uh, timeline. Three videos to finish. They were done, they just needed like the B-roll, right? And like, uh, so that worked, right? So, and you know, I brought in like the original 
video file here for us. They're mock products, right? So you can actually... All right, cool stuff. Now, if we go over to DaVinci and you try to do the same thing, do the click and drag thing, nothing works. You know, it's uh, it's not working. There's a different process to do this thing. And it's like, uh, it's not as complicated, but like uh, there's something to keep in mind when you're messing around with time bold, right? The thing is that like uh, with DaVinci, you got to have the footage first and then you drop in the XML file and then like the XML is like, all right, it starts to search for like the footage uh, to match up with the XML file, right? So in this case, you want to drop in your footage, part one, that belongs to this XML file, right? Now, again, you cannot click and drag. You have to import it, right? So you got to make sure you have your footage here, you know, ready to go first. So we go to file, import, import timeline. You select, in this case, XML part one, because it belongs to this footage. You hit open. It will say here automatically import source clicks into media. You think like uh, by having that selected, it will import like the footage that belongs with the XML file. It doesn't because if I hit OK, see, do you want to select another footage? Because it doesn't find a clip that's associated with the XML file, right? So in that case, let's just hit cancel. Let's try that again. File, import, timeline, select uh, part one for our part one video. And this time you deselect it, right? Because again, it's already here. So the XML file, when it gets imported, it's going to find this footage. Then it's going to sync up everything, uh, all the clips to like the right area. And it's going to create a timeline for us also. So you hit OK and now we play. Right, and like uh, he actually left. When we're done, they just needed like the beat. My girlfriend flew over and we talked about the modes and show. All right, so there you go. So now like it imported like the, imported the XML file. It created like a timeline for us. And then it synced up with this footage that we ha already had in place. Uh, with the xml file and it created like all the cuts and stuff like that right now i'm gonna delete this and uh i'm gonna show you what i'm gonna do that again with the xml file now there's uh kind of like an issue you have with uh davinci when you start to import xml files right let's just say i'll have music right and you know so put it in my master bin so now i have my part one footage from my video that i did in my car and then i got my background music now, if I have these two clips together, right next to each other, and I try to import the XML file, file, import, timeline, part one XML file, hit open, deselect this guy right here, I hit OK, now look what happens. Yeah, that was another issue I was having with uh, DaVinci when I was starting to mess around with Timebolt in the XML file. Uh, I guess I will... XML files work with DaVinci is that when you import an XML file, it searches within your project what to associate the XML file with. It finds the video file, it's like, all right, let me put that in the right spot of the XML file with this footage. And then it searches like the audio and then like it does the same thing, right? It kind of like uh, messes things up a bit and like I was having a hard time with this at first, right? So say if I have these two videos together in the same project and then like I try to import uh, the XML file, file, import, Timeline, hit part one, I hit open, deselect this guy, I hit OK. At the moment, I don't know much about it, but it's called like uh, Meow Wolf, something like that. And I guess it's like a group of like... See, that's what I'm saying. So like I was having that issue because like if it like, will search for like a video file first and then it will search for like a separate audio file second. In a way, I guess it kind of makes sense. Say if like you have uh, your video and then you have a lavalier mic and you want to like, you know, combine them together. So I guess in a way that's... It kind of makes sense in that sense, but I haven't messed with that at the moment, right? But for the time being, this is like the issue I have. So this is the solution I found for this situation, right? So I'm going to delete this uh, timeline. And then this is what you have to do. You have to separate these guys in their own bin. So we're going to create a new bin. Name this part one. You do another bin. This one's going to be part two. So obviously part one goes to bin one. Part two goes to bin two. So these guys are now separated, right? In its own folder. So now this is where I guess the trick happens. So if you want to like uh, import the XML files to match these two these two video files, you go file import, you go timeline. When I select part one first, right, hit open, and deselect this part. Now when we hit OK, we're gonna get another like uh, window to give us some options. We hit OK, and here we go. This is where the trick or the magic happens. Click on this arrow, deselect the master. In this case, because it's XML part one. We wanted it to like work with uh, our video part one that's isolated in its own bin. So select part one, right? So that way the XML files gets directed to this area and is only going to search uh, the footage that we have inside of this folder, right? So hit OK. And there you go. 
there's VR rooms, there's like, uh, you know, it's just like a lot of like bullshit to read. I mean, you know, which is real, kind of started to fuck with you. All right, so that works, right? And so I created like a timeline here. Uh, so just put it in part one because they belong together. So I'm going to do the same thing now for part two. So I'm going to do a file, import, timeline, select part two, hit open, deselect this again. We're going to get the same window, click on the pull down, deselect the master, and then only select part two because that's where we want our XML to be focused on, on uh, the folder in part two that has the, the part two footage in it. Hit OK. And same thing. There you go. You know, like I said, I kind of regret that as uh, much footage as I can in this video. So yeah, create a sequence. I'm just going to put it here in part two to keep them together. And there you go. I guess nothing, actually another lesson I learned when I went like that. So uh, I think I'm going to probably aim for that from now on. Is like, All right, so there you go. So basically now, like, uh, yeah, when you have like multiple clips, you want to make sure you isolate them first, right? Inside of your project file. If you're creating like different like XML files for each one, you know, you select the individual bin that you want the XML file to be directed towards. That way, like the XML file doesn't get confused, right? It's only focused on one video file that has one audio source, right? Because like I showed you with the music, if, you know, you have a bunch of footage all messed around, it's going to like combine video and audio sources and it's going to mess things up, right? So uh, that's what you have to do when you're messing around with XML files. When, when using uh, Time Bolt. Uh, one more thing before I go. Uh, this is kind of an issue that it's more of a, a personal thing. Uh, yeah, when I'm filming, I use my phone a lot, right? So I'm using like uh, my phone and like the thing about using phones is that like the frame rates are usually kind of fucked, right? Like they're never like a solid 30 frames per second, right? They're always like 27.6 or some weird shit like that, right? The cool things about Premiere Pro versus DaVinci is that with Premiere Pro, you are able to create like a weird custom like uh, frame rate settings, right? To match like uh, your, the frame rate of your camera. Uh, video right with DaVinci it doesn't do that you kind of like stuck to like the standard you know professional like frame rates right so the problem with that is that when you start playing back your video source like there's it becomes a drift because like uh this footage I think uh by default uh, if you go to the properties details see the frame rate is 29.87 right so when you import this inside of uh DaVinci if you go to the metadata, it's uh, 29.87. So there's like little fractions of fucking like of an offset of a frame rate. So the problem with that is that you get, you start to get like a drift and like your audio starts to get cut off. Like a lot of merch. Like right there. A lot of like, uh... so if that happens, uh, usually in the beginning, it's fine. As you can see here, it's fine, right? But then like it starts to get to a point where like, uh, you can see here, like the clip starts to get cut off. It gets too close to the edge. So eventually you start noticing like the words starts to get cut off pretty badly. Like, uh, meow. Like right here it says it get cut off. I think there's a documentary. Uh, you can check them out, but, uh. So when that happens, actually, uh, there's a shortcut that you, you can use. Say select, uh, say timeline. And select clips forward. Now by default, select clips forward on this track. It's Y. I changed it to F. Right, but by default it's Y for you guys if you haven't messed with your shortcuts, right? So if you hit that command, select clips forward, it's gonna select everything forward from like the playhead. So the cool thing about that is, you select forward, you wanna select the trim, edit mode, and when you move the cursor, you got two options. This one basically moves the entirety of the clips, right, as this. See that, it moves everything as this. And if you move the cursor up, see where the brackets, the arrows are inside of the brackets. It shifts the footage, but it, it keeps the edits in, in place, right? So that's what we want. So in this case, uh, again, select forward, get the trim edit mode, move the cursor up until you get like the arrows inside of brackets, and then you make slight adjustments, right? Until you, you know, you start seeing that like the footage doesn't get cut off. And then basically as you're editing, you keep moving up until you notice like, oh, it's starting to get too close again to the, the front here. See that? Like right here, it gets cut off. Merge? Yeah. So you can do the same thing. Select forward, get your trim edit mode, move the cursor up until you see the arrows inside of the brackets, and just shift that back a bit till, you yeah, know, that's good enough, and then you keep it going. You know, because like I said, like the frame rates is like, uh, and the, the footage is totally different than like the frame rate inside of DaVinci. So you know, get a little bit of an offset, which it's not that big of a deal, but it's something to keep in mind, right? So anyways, all right, that was a lot, <laughs> a lot of talking. Um, I personally like time board a lot. I actually really do. I, I use it all the time in all my videos. Um, also, like if you guys are interested in messing around with Time Boat and want to give it a try, they have a free version, but uh, this is basically more if you want to render out from the software itself, right? You cannot export an XML file, which is uh, 
you know, it's not helpful for you if you're trying to mess around with DaVinci, right? But if you want to get the paid version, $17 a month, which ain't that much, right? So you can actually pay for a month, give it a try. And if you like it, you can get the lifetime license, right? So, uh, I don't know. I think that's a pretty fair deal. If you guys want to help me out, uh, I actually have an affiliate link with these guys. And like, if you want to like, you know, buy the software, give it a try. I appreciate it if you use the affiliate link. It gives me a little commission, right? It helps me out a bit. You know, you guys can help me out in that way. Or, you know, I got QR codes over here. If you guys want to buy me a coffee, you know, they'll appreciate that big time. So anyways, uh, that's all I have for you. I hope that video helps out. And um, yeah, I really appreciate you guys watching. Talk to you next time. Take care and peace. Bye.